So the objective of this lesson is to understand uh, the basic concepts linked with hypothesis testing. Uh, so what, what, what exactly is hypothesis? So now when you make a decision, you got to be confident with certain statistics. So now uh, the decision bound uh, calculations are, are done using hypothesis. Now, as far as DP con HL is concerned uh, uh, in AI course, you are given two types of hypothesis testing. Uh, one is Z, Z and other is T. So Z type testing and T type testing. So uh, first let, let's understand some, some key terms before I go on to these particular tests so, so that you're clear with the key terminologies. So here the first key term that you got to understand is the population parameter. Now, population parameter represents the entire population mean and population proportion. And uh, sometimes where the population mean is not given, they'll give you raw data. Now, when they give you the population mean and variance, you are gonna use the Z test to do the hypothesis. When uh, they have given raw data or they have given just some sample, then you're gonna use T test. Now, you, you, what are the steps involved? So when, when you talk about the steps, you give the statistics first, so you suggest the hypothesis, then choose your significance level, like how, what confidence level you are looking at, and then decide on uh, the, the hypothesis, to decide on the hypothesis. Then use the data that has been given to calculate the statistics. Either you can use the p-value or the z and t values to give the conclusions. And, and the final step is to make decisions. And finally, you interpret the result in context of the problem. So let's take one example where uh, firstly, like the, the, the hypothesis testing is applied. Well, so there, there are two types of three types actually of the hypothesis that we, we're gonna learn. One is called as, uh, I mean, uh, one tail hypothesis, other is called as two tail. Now why I said it's three types is basically one tail hypothesis, it can be the left tail uh, I mean, right tail or left tail, and two tail is when you have got uh, both the possibilities. Now, uh, let's let's take a proper example to understand uh, the, the context. So beginning with the Z test, uh, the hypothesis testing of using Z test is done when population is normally distributed and population mean and variance is known. So when you talk about population mean and variance, now here, the central uh, limit theorem becomes very important that if a sample X is distributed normally with mean mu and sigma square, which is mean comma variance, the sample uh, average of certain, so suppose if you pick up some samples from here, uh, the average of those will, if it is normally distributed with mean mu, the variance is sigma square over N. This is the central limit theorem, which is also here. So central limit theorem is obviously important because from entire population, you pick up certain sample. Now, you know the mean and variance for entire population. So, so you got to also know the mean and variance for the sample. And you know what? The mean is the same as the population for even any particular sample you take. So, so population mean and sample mean is always the same, but the, the population variance, if it is sigma square, the sample variance is sigma square over N where N is the number of data. So this is, this is what a central limit theorem is about. So let us, let us uh, take one problem now on this concept. So uh, firstly, like when you talk about the, the problem uh, here now, if you read the question, how it links up with the Z distribution, if you see that the manager of restaurant chain goes to seafood wholesaler and inspects large catch of the over 50,000 francs, um, it is known that the population uh, uh, is normally distributed with the standard deviation of 4.2 grams. He will buy the catch if the average weight of the catch exceeds 55 grams per prawns. If in a random sample of 60 prawns taken and the mean weight is 55.56.2, at a 5% of significance level, should the manager purchase the catch? Now, just to uh, give the background information of this problem. Now, the hypothesis testing is uh, it, it starts with the first step where you say the null hypothesis. Now I assume that the, um, 
he will buy the catch when only if the mean weight exceeds 55 grams. So my null hypothesis is, okay, let's say the mean weight is 55 gram. And the alternate hypothesis is that mean weight is more than 55 grams. So out of these hypotheses, one of the hypotheses will be true. Now, if the H naught is true, I'm going to take this one, which means say that, okay, the mean weight is 55 grams exactly. And the other one, if I choose this one, it says that, okay, the mean weight of the prawns is more than 55 grams. Now, level of significance is 5%. It means that I'm 95% confident about this statistics. I, I, it, so my test will be, I'll be confident at around 95%. And 5% is the level of significance. Now, here, um, how do we decide with this two tail or one tail hypothesis? Now, firstly, you got to look at the, the hypothesis in H1. Now, if I look at here, so, so this is the, this is let's say 55. Uh, so this is 55 here. And I'm looking forward to something the average weight is 55 and I'm looking forward to okay, something higher than, so this has to be more than 55. So this particular value, now it becomes a right tail hypothesis. I mean, the two tail uh, is not possible here because it is only supporting one tail area. Now, what do we do is we basically uh, first get the, get the values uh, or the statistical calculations to decide uh, whether it is correct or not. Now, if you look at, any, in any test, any hypothesis testing. Now, if the population mean here um, is, let's say, suppose this is the critical region, this is called as critical region. Now, if your uh, statistics is, is uh, having a probability, the p-value of your probability is lower than the significance level, then you are gonna accept, reject H0 and accept H1. So now, for example, if p-value of my calculation is like 0 0.0001, and they have given the significance level as p is 0 0.05, so your hypothesis is at 1%, like 0 0.001, and their hypothesis at the significance level is 0 0.05. So in that case, you're going to uh, reject H0 and accept H1. So how do we get these values? How do we get the values for the... Uh, calculations. So let's let's make use of GDC here. But before I go on, like here, I'm going to just write down the X bar, which is going to be normally distributed with mean again, the same thing. So mean is a uh, 56.2 that I've taken, but the variance will become 4.2 square over N because there are 60 prawns. So this is going to be the uh, mean and variance for the, uh, the sample that I've taken. Now, using this calculation, I'm going to make use, uh, make, give the statistics for uh, my conclusion. Okay, so with the given statistics, we had a sample mean is uh, normally distributed with mean of 56.2 and the variance of 4.2 square over 60. And now I'm going to use GDC to calculate the probability of the sample catch to be higher than X bar has to be more than 55. So let's see how, it, oh, what, do we, what do we get exact value for? Now you go under statistics, you um, uh, go under statistics, go under uh, test, you go under Z test because mean and variance is known, you go under one sample. Now here your test is one tail and it is more than, mu naught is 55 here. So you put this value and uh, the standard deviation sigma is, uh, 4.2 and uh, X bar is your average, which is 56.2. The number of sample that you've taken is, sigma is the population standard deviation. So here the N that you've taken is, um, number of values is 60. So, so now let's see what's the probability that I get. So what, what I'm getting is the P value is 0 0.01 and the Z, corresponds, Z value corresponding is 2.21. So, so p-value is um, 0.013. So as you can see, the p-value that I got is 0.0134 and the z-value that I got is 2.21. So now, um, since this probability is lower than 0.05, I don't have any evidence to accept H0. H so in that case, the H1 is the correct one. So what does it mean is that since we accept H1, 
the mean weight of the of this thing uh, the uh, the prawns is higher than 55 it means that the manager should catch or purchase the catch so this is how you do z test now this is the boundary this is the critical boundary that you you got to understand this is the p value that you got which is 0 0.0134 and now if you look at the 5% level was this much so you are actually standing in the critical region now when you stand in critical region you always accept h1 as your hypothesis base so this is the z uh, z test now let's let's do one more sample example so i'm taking one more example which is uh, the third one the back so of salted cashew nuts uh, state that their net content is 100 gram and the manufacturer knows that the population standard deviation is 1.6. So the moment population standard deviation is known, uh, you got to use Z-test. A customer claims that the bag has been lighter and it is uh, the manager decides to investigate. So the manager calls for 40 samples and he, founds that, he finds that the sample weight is 99.4 grams. Can you perform 5% uh, statistics level of significant statistics here. So what we do is first thing is that we we take the H naught here. So so let's say the the mean weight is hundred. Now the customer claims that okay H one is that okay mean weight is less than hundred. So that's my automatically it's one tail hypothesis. Now I'm using the left tail area. Now my critical area is actually zero point zero five. So 0 0.05 is the critical level significance. And now I have to decide what is my P value, the, the value of P that I'm getting for the statistics. So now you write down the sample statistics that are available. So X bar is normally distributed. Sample mean that you got is actually 99.4 and the, the variance is 1.6 square over 40 because that's what a central limit theorem is all about. Now, using this statistics, I'm going to find out the probability of X bar being less than 100. So, so X bar being less than 100. So let's let's just check out what what is the value using uh, on on GDC. So just cal continuing with the calculation on GDC here, what we got is we got to uh, do this now final test. So we go under test Z test one sample. Now this. Tail, the alternate hypothesis is less than uh, uh, this thing, less than 100. So your null hypothesis is exactly 100 here. Now, sigma, which is 1.6, uh, you feed x bar is uh, x bar is 99.4. That's the average that I got. And uh, then you talk, take the numbers, number of samples, that is 40. So when you do that, you get that, uh, so, so the probability, probability that you're getting is actually, uh, which is 0 0.008853, while my significance level is 5%. So you're actually standing in a uh, critical region. So that's why uh, the null hypothesis is actually uh, rejected because your probability is lower than the, the critical significance level. And hence you accept H1, which means that you're accepting that the mean weight is less than 100. It means that the customers have been cheated by the, the manufacturer. So in that case, the manager should take strict action in order to make sure that the weight is a, a hundred or above for ethical practice. Let's take one more example on this. So here is the fourth example. So, <clears throat> uh, and, uh, a breeder wants to produce a fleece which is extremely fine. In 2013, his herd had mean uh, fineness 20.3 microns with standard deviation of 2.89. The standard devi deviation remains uh, a con a relatively constant over the period of time. In 2017, a sample of 80 was taken and the average of, for that was found as 19.2. Use uh, the significance five percent significance level whether the the um, fineness has changed. So what we do is we here we again take uh, uh, like the null hypothesis that okay null hypothesis is um, H naught is basically the mean has mean is basically the same uh, as the twenty point three so mean fineness is twenty point three and uh, now the H1 is uh, 
H1 that I'm taking is mean has changed. It means that mean is not the same as the older mean, which is mean is not 20.3. Now this is an open-ended question, which is like two-tail hypothesis. Now it can be less or more. So now let's write down the values that they have given. So the values that is given is X bar is normally distributed. So first you write down X distribution. So X distribution is actually X is normally distributed here with mean of 20.3 comma uh, 2.89. That's your X distribution, uh, 2.89 square. Now X bar is actually here with the sample distribution that is mean is 19.2 and uh, variance is 2.89 square over n, which is nothing but 80 samples have been taken. So, so this is your, uh, uh, the data for the sample average. Now you have to find out the probability of basically x bar uh, basically not being equals to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say 20.3. So if this value is basically not uh, if this this is giving me a p-value which is lesser than uh, 20 point, um, I mean lesser than 5%, we reject H0 or otherwise we accept H1. So let's see what is the value that is coming on calculator. So here here are the calculations. So first I'm going to take, once again, show you the, the alternate pathways which are you have to go to. So first you go under statistics, you go under test, you go under z-test, one sample. Now your null hypothesis is uh, not equals. I mean, so I mean uh, uh, the alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the mean weight should be twenty point three, and the sigma is uh, two point eight nine. So the deviation is two point eight nine for the population. X bar is the sample mean that is nineteen point two, and the number of data that I've taken is eighty. So when you do that, you're getting the the p value, which is uh, 6.6311 into 10 to the power minus 4, which is like 0 0.0066311, which is obviously you can see this probability is much lower than 0 0.05. Hence, if I conclude at 5% confidence significance level, it means that the H0 is rejected and you accept H1. So there is very little evidence uh, for accepting H0. Hence, the, you can conclude that the, the, the fineness had changed over the period of time. 